you know, for years, um, members of the church uh, have been criticized for um, pushing marriage on people uh, who experience same-sex attraction. The laws of God are set. The bounds that the Lord has set, He set them. They are, they are not going to change. The doctrine will not change. Um, and, um, and our culture within the church supports that very strongly. Um, and there you see a predicament of a person growing up in this culture uh, experiencing these feelings, tendencies, attractions, um, and wondering, where do I fit in to this great plan of salvation, which is mothers and fathers and children and families and eternity. Um, and that is a difficult, difficult place to find yourself in. Um, Many other members of the church, um, people who are single, or may, may ask them their, the same question. You know, where do I fit into this? Why am I not married? Why don't you know? Where do where do I belong? Um, and so, for a person who experiences same-sex attraction, um, it is a different case than a person who's just single in the church. Um, in that the attractions are different. <laughs> um, and um, the challenges may be equally difficult to the individuals. Um, God isn't, you know, ladening on this weight on someone uh, that they can't handle. Uh, everyone's given their weight, but, um, but they are different challenges, and we can't just easily explain them away and say, well, they need to just, uh, people who experience same-sex attraction, they need to just live their life like any other single person in the church. Um, we have to be very careful uh, because a person who experiences same-sex attraction in the church, um, while their friends are experimenting with um, kissing or whatever you, it may be, that they're not really breaking the law of chastity, but they're kind of, you know, they're experimenting with the things that adolescents do. Um, a person who experiences same-sex attraction um, often will never ever have that opportunity in their youth to experiment, um, to, you know, to do that. One, because they don't really have the desire maybe to do that with someone of the the opposite sex, and um, two, they're trying to just do everything they can to keep themselves in line, um, to not look weird or not, and they don't want anyone to to know that they experience same-sex attraction. It could, you know, it, to them, to a young person, uh, it could, you know, you know, junior high and high school, it's hard. Uh, you get made fun of. You get, you know. To make a long story short, once a person has come to terms with that, once they have moved into a point where they can stop and say, um, it doesn't really matter anymore where this came from or why I can't do what other people can do or why I am you know, am the way I am. What matters is what I'm going to do with it. Uh, when, when a person finds themselves in that situation, usually between the years 18 age 18 and 25, kind of the years of marriage within the church, when a person finds themselves in that place is when they begin to have to really think about, what am I going to do for the rest of my life in terms of companionship? Other members of the church, um, while they may struggle to find companionship or the right companion, a person who experiences same-sex attraction, they are also having that same struggle, but also on top of that, they have these very real feelings and uh, very real desires, just like everyone else, but they don't fit in with the gospel plan. It doesn't mean that the gospel needs to change. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I say this more so that people can just understand the situation that these people experience. Um, 
And so for many of them, when they ask themselves this question of where, what is my future, they'll break it down into a few different paths. There's the get out of the church and just go with these, these feelings um, and, and not look back, maybe. But for someone who experiences, you know, these feelings and has this testimony in spiritual things and faith in God, that isn't a very promising or happy path to look at. And so they look at the other paths, which are continue dating and remain celibate, um, not, not have sexual relations, maybe ever. Or continue dating and maybe get married and, um, and have a family and, and do those type of things. And with that, though, comes, you know, the fears that, um, that, you know, what if, you know, these feelings that I have are so strong that it ruins that family. Um, and so they find themselves in this place where they feel like they're going to hurt people if they go straight way out of the church and, and live, you know, that life where they may find happiness in, um, in a sense, in having companionship and a relationship with someone of their same gender, but not an eternal uh, family, not a temple-sealed family, but something that's bearable. Uh, or the celibate path where they just basically hunker down and it's a difficult um, road and it's bumpy and it's, you know, not always going to feel very promising and um, it just doesn't feel like, I mean, who wants to be alone? Um, that's a hard path to look at. And then this path of marriage. Um, which, you know, no one wants to get a divorce. No one wants to um, commit to someone in a sacred way like you do in the house of the Lord and have it fall apart. Have, I mean, even have maybe uh, not necessarily on any um, account of their own doing um, a divorce, but maybe their spouse just says, you know, we just, this doesn't work, and it, and it ends. It's a hard path, too. For me, I am married, and I experience same-sex attraction. And a lot of people uh, will say, well, that's a dangerous place to be. But really, when you look at all marriages, all marriages um, are potentially dangerous place to be. Uh, all marriages could end in disaster. All marriages could end in divorce. It takes some being married to be divorced. Um, it's what you do with it. Um, what it comes down to is not the fact that you're married, but the fact that you are trying to live your life in a moral way. Um, that's what keeps marriages together in, in any type of marriage. Um, is living a moral life. Um, uh, people will say to me, you know, you probably shouldn't ever talk about your marriage because people shouldn't think that that's ideal or what they should, you know, push for. Um, my marriage isn't perfect. It isn't. But, but I say, whose is? Um, but my life is great. Um, and I think my wife would say the same thing. We have our ups and downs, we have our hard times, but what, what marriage doesn't? Um, just because someone who experiences same-sex attraction got married and stepped out on their spouse, it doesn't mean that anyone who experiences same-sex attraction just because they experience that is going to do the same thing. The same would go for any heterosexual couple. Just because a heterosexual couple get married, it doesn't mean that because they have an attraction to another person 
which is normal, uh, that they're going to have to leave their spouse, or they, they will. Uh, we all face these same experiences. Um, I would say the most important thing for someone who experiences same-sex attraction to know about the path of marriage, if that is where they want to go, uh, is that um, they should carefully consider their patriarchal blessing and the things that the Lord has promised them. And they should always listen to the Spirit. Um, my marriage wouldn't exist if I wouldn't have done those two things. The closer I got to God, the more that became a reality in my life. Now, with that said, I recognize 100% that there are thousands of people within the church, maybe more, who, um, who will choose that path of celibacy, that path where they won't ever be married in this life, and that path where they don't just leave their faith. Um, and they may walk that path quietly, and they may never tell very many people about how hard life is for them, um, about their challenges. And, um, and that's a hard place to be. But if they know within their heart uh, that God has a plan for them, that they are aligning their will with His, and that He is directing their life, and that m maybe marriage is in the future, in this life or the next, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make their life less than mine it, with a marriage. I'm very grateful that I have my wife and that I have this experience um, to be able to be married and to be sealed to her. Um, but it should never be something that's 100% encouraged. Uh, for the right person at the right time, with the right spiritual guidance and um, the right feelings in that situation, it could be the right thing. It could be. Um, doesn't mean that the marriage isn't going to, you know, have its ups and downs and problems and, and whatnot. Every marriage does. Every marriage does. Um, it's a hard question and it's a very personal question, but if one thing that a, a person who experiences same-sex attraction, who finds themselves in a position like me, where you have this desire to serve God, and you also recognize that you have these very real feelings, um, you, you need to always remember that when you follow your spiritual promptings and, and you live up to what God uh, requires. Um, as many times as you may fall, there is an atonement there. There, there is always a way back. There's Christ will always make it right. Um, and although it may be hard, and although it it may be, for lack of a better word, downright hellish. Um, to experience uh, what you do some days. Um, there is that future ahead. You choose your life ultimately though, we all do. We all have agency. Um, and if you choose a path of celibacy and you're hoping for a marriage um, and and it comes great, and if, you, if it doesn't, just know that when you've picked your path, you stick to it. Um, and if you stumble across the way, know that there's always a way back. There's always room in the atonement for you. Um, and uh, you just can't give up on yourself. Um, don't throw your spiritual heart to the side for your gay heart, for the heart that uh, your natural man. Don't just don't just throw everything that you know to be important and valuable. Don't throw your testimony away just because marriage may not be in 
the works for you. For years and years, um, it was common practice. Uh, for anyone counseling or working with a person who experiences same-sex attraction, uh, to counsel them to be quiet about it, to tell only a few people about it. Um, for years and years, people who experienced same-sex attraction uh, married and kind of followed suit of society. And we find ourselves in a time period when uh, never has it been easier uh, to pick another path. Uh, never has it been easier for a person to have to really, or never has it been, uh, I guess, more difficult for a person who is a member of the church who experiences same-sex attraction because there are so many options presented to them of ways that they can live their life. And um, society and the church years and years past have kind of stuck together um, and now we're seeing a separation um, and we've been seeing that gradually over time. There are some great things that have come from this. Uh, for example, I'm here talking about this right now and I feel pretty confident that I'm not going to lose my job. I feel pretty confident that I'm going to leave here and not get beat up on the street. I'm not going to lose my life because I'm sharing these things. That is a great blessing, I feel. Um, and it's something that's going to really help us um, to come to understand and love each other better uh, as we're able to really express and talk about these difficult things. At the same time, uh, where in years past, people uh, who experience same-sex attraction might have just uh, married, um, less and less are probably marrying um, and more and more are picking uh, a path of celibacy or other paths. Um, for me, uh, in the path that I've picked, um, in my own experience, as I have been married and still do uh, experience same-sex attractions, um, my attractions to my wife uh, when we were first married, were equal to the attractions that I had uh, just in my everyday life with, towards um, my same gender. It's kind of hard to say, and I don't know why that was, and I don't know how it happened. Um, to me, it was a miracle. Um, have those same attractions to my wife always been so intense as they were when we were first married? I must be honest, no. Um, but I would say that for most people, um, when they're engaged and everything that comes with marriage is so close, um, those feelings uh, are very, very powerful. And as time goes on, um, in a marriage, uh, heterosexual or, or mine, um, whatever you want to call my, my marriage, um, a great one, uh, those same feelings that you feel initially when you get married, uh, the attractions, the intensity, um, there physically, um, they peter off. Uh, it doesn't mean that it entirely goes away. I'm attracted to my wife in so many different ways, but that intensity that I had when I was first engaged and when we had to speed up our uh, marriage because we felt like we, we needed to, uh, you know, instead of getting married in May, we got married in March. We, we moved it up because we felt like, you know, it would be the safe way t to go about things. Um, and, uh, and that intensity is not the same today as it was then. Um, but it doesn't make my love for my wife any less. Um, and this is where I have to ask people to, to be understanding of me. Um, I felt very inspired to marry my wife. Um, and my marriage will never be the same as your marriage uh, if you have married someone who is uh, a heterosexual and you're a heterosexual 
your marriage is going to be different than mine. No marriage is equal to another, for sure, but we can't compare, you know, a heterosexual marriage to a marriage uh, where my wife, who is heterosexual and I'm, I'm not, uh, we can't compare these two and, and expect them to balance equally. This is my life challenge. This is the thing that I'm to learn and grow from. I want just as much as every other person to uh, have that passion of, uh, you know, my engagement uh, time period now with my wife. I do. Uh, I, but I can't snap my fingers and make that happen. But at the same time, I, I, I sort of uh, demand the, the respect of my friends that are gay uh, in the choices that I have made um, as I choose to respect their choices. Yeah. For years and years, people who uh, were gay and, and still currently have pushed for the opportunity to love who they want. And so when I uh, have chosen to love who I want, I expect the same respect um, that I give to them. And I hope that we could all come to understand that um, while we may not all choose the path um, that others would see as perfect or what they would choose, um, we have to respect everyone's agency to choose the path that they want to choose. Um, I'm, I'm not in a position to tell someone else um, that uh, the, the person that they're with, they, they don't really love. And I would expect someone else to do the same for me. I really do love my wife. She really does love me. Um, it's just different than what your love between you and your spouse might be.